Good morning. Good morning. And welcome this morning to Salem on this beautiful, beautiful summer day here in Worcester. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, and we're all here celebrating God's grace and love. So that's a great day. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements. First of all, I've been asked to announce, we finally figured out how we're going to handle communion. So for those who want to come forward, starting next Sunday, uh, pretty much like we used to do it, uh, those who want to receive up front will simply come down the aisle. There'll be a person there to hand you the host. Then you take a glass out of the tray, and then you put the empty glass in an empty tray uh, that will be sitting on a table. For those who do not want to uh, we come up and receive, continue picking up those little uh, individual ones as you come in the church. And after we have finished with those folks, I'll receive communion, and we'll do communion for everyone else sitting in the congregation. So I hope that explains it all, and we're going to be starting this next Sunday, all right? Finally got it figured out. So our two assistants who will be helping us, I'm assuming I'm correct on this, will be Tim and Belda, who will be holding the host and the tray of wine. So if you have any questions, you can ask me about it after church. Otherwise, uh, that's how we'll, today we're going to do it still the old way. So we'll just simply uh, do the little individuals. If you thinking we were going to do it the other way and would like to still participate in communion at some point, uh, raise your hand and I'm sure Geralt or Tim would be glad to bring you one of the individual ones. So anyways, uh, also I, I feel the need to, because uh, people keep asking me about what's going on with me physically. Well, my knee should have healed by now, somebody asked me before church. And I said, well, it had. My knee is not the problem. Since my knee surgery, uh, my back has become the problem. And uh, they have uh, disc in L4. For those who know the designations, L4, L5, S1 is where my problem is, bulging disc. And I asked the doctor, I said, well, what's caused all this now? And he said, did you enjoy those years playing football? And I said, I guess not near enough. <laughs> so, but that's the problem. And they tried one set of shots, and I'm going in probably within the next month to have a second set of shots that will hopefully block the pain. So if that happens, I'll be dancing up here soon. So my knees are fine. But after the surgery, my knee is fine. It's the back that became an issue. So God just always gives us this thorn in the flesh just to keep us humble. I just wish he didn't want me so humble. Anyways, with that, let us rise to the glory of God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. We continue our service with our gathering hymn. Uh, it's 836 in the hymnal if you want the music. It's joyful, joyful, we adore thee. I love this song. Uh, this is based upon Beethoven's Ode to Joy. And I personally think it's one of the most beautiful pieces of music ever written. I, I love this, the Ode to Joy. So join me in singing, joyful, joyful, we adore thee.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to <coughs> the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Mercy delights us, and the world longs for your loving care. Hear the cries of everyone in need, and turn our hearts to love our neighbors with the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We hear God's word. Our first reading this morning is from Deuteronomy chapter 30, <clears throat> 9 through 14. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all your undertakings, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your soil. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, just as he delighted in prospering your ancestors. 
when you obey the Lord your God by observing his commandments and decrees that are written in this book of the law, because you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us <coughs> and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our second reading is from Colossians 1, 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel, that has come to you just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world. So it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehend the grace of God. This you learned from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from this glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The word of our Lord, thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? gospel for this day is a reading from the gospel of St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Please be seated. I, I want to talk about this reading before I read it to you. Uh, first of all, it's Luke. And uh, Luke is, this is the first volume of what most Bible scholars believe is a two-volume set. And I think I've maybe talked about that before. Luke and Acts were written by the same writer. And most scholars also believe that it was, had the same purpose, that Luke and Acts was written by Luke to be used at Paul's trial in Rome. And the purpose of Luke and Acts is to show that Christianity is not a threat to the Roman Empire, which was the charge that had been leveled against Paul. That he was guilty of treason against Rome. And so Luke and Acts was written to show, no, he's not guilty of treason, and there's not a problem between Christianity and the Roman Empire. They're not incompatible. Anyways, but this is one of, uh, Luke loves to tell uh, Jesus parables, and uh, parables are interesting because I've always said storytelling is uh, an interesting way of uh, communicating truth. And this is one of the more familiar parables. It's called the Good Samaritan. Uh, I don't know if I've ever talked about or if you know much about who Samaritans were, but I thought I would just put that in context for you. Samaritans were considered to be pretty much lowlifes by any good Jew. 
Any good Jew would have nothing to do with a Samaritan. If you would walk into a store, you might likely see two water fountains, one that says Jews only and the other said Samaritans only, because a Jew would have absolutely nothing to do with Jews. They wouldn't even drink from the same cup or drink from the same well that a Samaritan would drink, because they saw them as worse than worse, lower than low. Now why? Who were the Samaritans? Well, the Samaritans actually were Jews of a sort. Uh, if you all remember the history of Israel, uh, there came a time when King Nebuchadnezzar took over Israel and took all the good people off with him to Babylon to serve as slaves. But he left behind a lot of the more common folk, the farmers, etc. Well, during the interim, while the good Jews were in Babylon, maintaining their racial purity, the Jews who were back in Palestine intermarried with some of the Canaanites tribes who were there. And so when the Jews came back, and there's an, if you read in the Old Testament, it shows you this interesting story about when the Jews were released from their captivity by the Persian king Cyrus, they come back in there, and the Jews who were still there, these Samaritans now, uh, thought they were coming, they were going to welcome them with open arms. They come back and go, yay, our friends are back, you're back. And instead the Jews said, we have nothing to do with you, you're disgusting. Because they had intermarried and polluted the bloodline. And so a good Jew would have nothing to do with a Samaritan. They were worse than Gentiles. So that's who the Samaritans were. So it's, you need to understand that to put into context this story. Because in the story of the good Samaritan, who is the hero in the story? It's not the good Levite, who was the altar guild of that day. They were the ones who served in the temple and made sure everything was ready for the priests. Not the priest who passed by, but it was the uh, Samaritan. Yeah. Anyways, here's the story in Luke. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself. Remember, the purpose of these questions was not to discern some great spiritual truth. It was to make Jesus look dumb. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Try to give him a question he couldn't answer. So he's not satisfied that Jesus gave him an answer. He says... Jesus says, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Now, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? Well, he said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You know, a long, long time ago, I, I think it was back in maybe 2000 or so. I, I love movies, by the way. I'm a great movie buff. And that's, to me, that was one of the sad things with uh, COVID. I couldn't go to the movie theaters as often as I like. I love going to the movies, especially science fiction. But I remember this one movie that came out, and I think it was about uh, 2000 or so, very, it's not 2000, 2001, 2002, somewhere in there. And the movie was called Pay It Forward. Does anyone remember that movie? Did anyone see it? I'm just curious, have, how many of you have seen the movie? Okay, well then you kind of know what the movie is about. The movie is about uh, this young boy who was challenged by his elementary school teacher to come up with a special project. In fact, he challenges the whole class. Come up with a project that you think will change the world. Well, they all come up with different programs and whatever. 
But this long boy comes up with something interesting. He comes up with the idea of paying it forward. Now, basically, pay it forward is the opposite of pay it back. You know, pay it back is where, you know, somebody does a favor for you. They cut your grass. They send you a birthday card. They bring you food over while you're in, coming home from the hospital, whatever. They do a favor for you. So the next time you get a chance, you do a favor for them. You pay it back. Pay them back for what they did. I go out to lunch with a friend, so the next time we go out for lunch, I'm going to pick the bill up. That's pay it back. But pay it forward is a little different. Pay it forward is a little different. It's not like, well, I go in the hospital, you came to visit me, so I'll go visit you. No, no. Pay it forward is just the opposite. It's doing something nice for someone for no reason, just to do something nice. And if they ask you how they can pay you back for your kindness, well, just tell them to do five unsolicited kindnesses for other people. And when those five people ask how they can pay you back, tell them to go out and do five kindnesses for five other people, and so on and so on and so on. And if we keep that up, just think of how fast that could travel across our nation and across our world. Just imagine how we could change the world if we focused more on paying it forward than paying it back. Well, I think that's the premise of this story that stands before us in the Gospel of, of Luke. We call it the story of the Good Samaritan, probably one of the most well-known parables that Jesus ever told. I didn't even have to read it to you. All I had to stand up here and say, parable of the Good Samaritan. You know the entire story, didn't you? But throughout the years, I have always been amazed at how this story gets misunderstood. Or perhaps more accurately, how it gets misinterpreted. Now here's how the no story normally is interpreted. And I'm sure you've heard sermons that have kind of spelled this out for you. The man who was left alongside of the road, half beaten and half dead, are the people that we encounter in our life all of the time. People who have needs. When we encounter these people, we have a decision to make. Why, we can either be like the Levite or the priest who kept on walking, ignoring the plight of the man before them. And why did they ignore that plight, by the way? Do you know? Because the Levite and the priest were on their way to Jerusalem to perform their sacred duties at the temple. And according to Jewish law... If you touched and got blood on your hands, or if you touched a dead body, and he very well could have been dead, then you were considered unclean. And you had to go through a whole ritual of washing to cleanse yourself and purify yourself from all that uncleanness, which meant you would be disqualified from serving your time in the temple. So the Levite and the priest could not have, they would have had, and that was a high honor to serve in the temple in Jerusalem. And they would have had to forego that if they would have stopped and touched this man. So they chose not to. They chose not to. They leave the man on the side of the road. And of course the story is that we can be like the Levite or the priest and say it is uncomfortable and we don't want to do it. Or we can be like the Samaritan. You know that yucky guy. And do the right thing. Stop. And we can help people we see along the road who need our help. And that's how we should be, right? Like the Samaritan. We should be like that good Samaritan. You see somebody along the road whose car is broken down. In fact, I just heard Tim has got some car problems. This is what comes when you try to fix your own car. <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> or I was going to say something about driving a subpar car like a Subaru. But anyways, moving along. <laughs> If he had a BMW, this stuff wouldn't happen. Anyways. <laughs> but that's the one. If you see somebody on along the road whose car is broken down, stop over and help them out. You see somebody who has a problem, stop and help them. That's the moral of the story. Well, that's how we normally interpret it, don't we? Now, here's how I think the story should be understood. Who is the poor, unfortunate wretch who's been beaten and left half dead on the side of the road? It's us. We're the guy laying on the side of the road. 
We're the guy who has been beaten and left there. And the priest and the Levite, yeah, they are the kind of people we encounter in life. People who see what's happening and just don't want to get involved. In fact, one of my favorite jokes, if I see if I can remember it, is a story about the guy who's walking along the street and he falls into this deep pit and he can't get out because the walls are too steep and too straight. And so he starts hollering for help. And his doctor happens to be walking by. And the doctor looks in the hole and says, hi, John. He says, I'm, hey, I'm stuck in this hole. Can you help me out? He says, sure. Reaches into his pocket. He pulls out a prescription pad, writes a prescription on it, rips it off, and throws it down the hole and walks off. Now the guy's got a prescription, but he's still in the hole. A few minutes later, uh, another guy walks by, and he's his doctor, or he's his, uh, his lawyer. And he says, uh, hey, what's going on, John? He says, I'm stuck down in this hole. Can you, can you help me out? And he says, yeah, sure. And he throws him a $5 bill and walks on. John's got $5 in a prescription now, but he's still stuck in this hole. Finally, a good friend of his walks by. And the guy looks down and says, hey, John, what you doing? He says, I'm stuck down in this hole. Can you help me out? He says, sure. And with that, he jumps down in the hole. And the guy looks at John and he says, he says well, what are you doing, you nuts? He says, now we're both down in this hole. And his friend looks at him and says, yeah, I know. He says, but I've been down here before, and I know the way out. Good Samaritan story is about jumping down the hole because we've been down there ourselves and helping people out. We meet these people all the time. You know, the other day I was at Walmart, and I happened to overhear this conversation, which I think, you know, it's kind of talks about people who hear and don't hear, like the two people in my joke at the beginning. I mean, the two ladies obviously knew each other, and I happened to be there in the peanut butter section looking for peanut butter, and I listened, I always listen to people talk. I pick up my best sermon material that way. And anyways, the two ladies obviously knew each other. They met there, and one lady was asking the second lady, how you doing? She looked at her and says, how you doing lately? And the second lady looked at her and said, oh, not too good. My back has been giving me a lot of trouble. I've got to go see the doctor, and I don't know what they're going to do. And the first lady responded to her by saying, Oh, that's nice. I'm glad to hear that. Now, it was obvious that she had asked the question, but she really wasn't all that concerned or interested in the answer. In the Good Samaritan story, the Good Samaritan is God. He is the one who sees us, the poor unfortunates, lying on the side of the road, broken down by sin, broken down by life, broken down by the troubles that we encounter so often in life. He is the one who comes to us and he lifts us up. He is the one who tends our wounds. He is the one who picks us up and takes us to a place of rest and healing. He is the good Samaritan who loves us and helps us. Now he is asking us in this story, the good Samaritan story, I think, to pay it forward. Because he loves us, we ought to love one another. We ought to allow his love for us become the motivation for helping others. You know, find someone, this story is telling us. Find someone to pay it forward to. Find someone to share God's love with. Someone who will never be able to repay you. But simply someone you want to help. Look for ways to take the love of God that was given so freely to you and pass it on. Pay it forward. You know, I remember, I don't know if this speaks to this at all, but I remember when I first arrived at Zion here in Worcester, uh, one of the first things I wanted to know when I met with my first church council was, what was their purpose for existence? Why did Zion exist? What was their purpose for being a church? And I got all kinds of things like, well, we exist to keep the history of the church going. We got to preserve, you know, the ministry of downtown Worcester, blah, 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 blah. But it really meant nothing. And so I engaged the church very early in my ministry there in kind of trying to set up a reason why we existed. We had to exist for more than just to keep these buildings going. We had to exist for more than that. In fact, I used to always see that the way that people came to the church was, well, if you want to join our church, if you want to come, I guess we'll let you come in. And if you, you know, meet our qualifications, we'll, we'll consider your membership. Almost like a country club. And I thought we should be more than that. 
And so we worked for about a year or two. Barb was there all during that time. I don't remember how long it took us, but we eventually came up with principles for our church. But the most important thing we came up with was a catchphrase for the church. Something that we, we thought kind of capsulized what we really wanted to be, what we in, dreamed of being. And I, I beat it into the heads of the people almost every Sunday from the pulpit. It was on every newsletter that went out. It was in every bulletin that went out. And I bet you Barb even still remembers it, don't you? What was it, Barb? I did a good job of drumming that in, didn't I? And that was, that was our catchphrase. That was our theme. Be disciples. First, be disciples. Be involved in the Christian faith. Be involved with Christ. Submerse yourself in your faith in Jesus Christ. But then most of all, that's not where it stops. And too often, that's where it stops for most Christians. Be disciples. I'll be the best person I can be. Make disciples. Find ways to express your Christian faith in ways in which you reach out and pay it forward and help people. That became the guiding principle for Zion. And out of that grew all kinds of things, like DZ at six, a food pantry, trunk or treat, Christmas by Bill, Christmas toys for children, all kinds of outreach programs. And, they, and we never expected anything in return for them. We just did them because it was the right thing to do, to pay it forward. We were going to be disciples, and we were going to live out our faith as God's people. And we hoped that in the process of doing that, we could make disciples. Be disciples, make disciples. I think that's what the Good Samaritan story is about. Look for ways to realize that Jesus has given us so much. You read from Colossians today, Amanda. You know That's what we're studying in our Bible study. Colossians, and we've been talking about, and Paul's theme in Colossians is pay it forward. You have been immersed, we talked about today in our Bible study, you have been immersed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. You have been washed clean of your sins. You are a child of God. Now, Paul says, go out and live like one. Let Christ live in and through you. And that's what the Good Samaritan story is about. You have been saved by the Good Samaritan. Now go out and pay it forward. Amen. We continue our service. Uh, another one of my favorite songs. Gosh, I love the songs I pick. I do a good job, don't I, Sandy? Thank you. Terrible when you got to ask for compliments. That was a little joke, by the way. It's okay to smile in church once in a while. And you're not going to. Okay. Anyways. What? You've grown in church? <laughs> I, I remember one time I asked somebody, because uh, I said, you know, why aren't there any good German jokes? And they said, oh, because being a German is no laughing matter. <laughs> so, hey, you laughed at that one. Anyways, okay, we're going to sing 679 if you want the music. And the hymn is, For the Fruit of All Creation. Let us rise to the glory of God. <laughs>
I start, the Nicene Creed, I just wanted to share with you some of the things that, that our Salem Council has been working on, one of which is the idea of having a community kitchen, one that would be a stationary box in our parking lot where people that have can bring items, stock it up, and those that need can go and pick up what they need. So if you're interested in helping out with that project, please contact a council member as soon as you can. I think it's a great idea. It's in addition to the, the thing we do with Zion, and I think it's our own little gift to the community. So, living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one, one God, God, the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, of all, all that is seen, seen and unseen. And unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our For sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. ethnic, racial, and religious profiling and discrimination. Hear us, O oh God. family, 
Bill, Marion, Jean, Tony, the family of George, family of Sharon, family of Zachary, family of Andy, Robert, and those whom we now name aloud or in our hearts. Uphold those who grieve, support the needs of any who are unemployed, hungry, or have nowhere to lay their heads. Turn this community toward neighbors in need. Bring aid and support to those who are poor, beaten down, abused, forgotten, silenced, or avoidant. We give thanks for the saints who revealed your love and mercy in this life. Inspired by their witness, strengthen us to live in hope. Hear us, O oh God. time and place in Jesus name and filled with your Holy Spirit we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping Amen, Amen. the peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you let's take a moment and share that peace with one another thank you for joining us this Sunday for our Sunday live stream service. This is the time that we will be passing the offering plate. I encourage you to make a contribution to Salem Lutheran Church either by check or by using our PayPal button that is found on our slcw.org website. Thank you in advance and I now return you to our service.
us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of ever lasting life and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the host of heaven we praise your name and join their unending most mighty, O God most merciful, O God our rock and our salvation, hear us as we praise, call us to your table, grant us your life. For when the world was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. Ruth faced starvation, David fought Goliath, and the psalmist cried out for healing, and full of compassion, you granted the people your life. You entered our sorrows in Jesus, our brother. He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. Amen. Trusting his presence in every time and every place, we plead, Amen. Amen. O oh God, you are breath. Send your spirit on this meal. O oh God, you are bread. Feed us with yourself. O oh God, you are wine. Warm our hearts and make us one. O oh God, you are fire. Transform us with hope. O oh God, most majestic. O oh God, most motherly. O oh God, our strength and our song. You show us a vision of a tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life, the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, 
life in you now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the gifts of God for the people of God. Take and eat, for this is the body of Christ. Take and drink, this is the blood of Christ. And now may this body and this blood strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. rise in prayer. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now receive the blessings of our Lord. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Our concluding hymn, our sending hymn, is The Spirit Sends Us Forth to Serve. If you want the music, it's in the blue hymnal, 551. 551.
let you go, just a couple things. One, again, to remind you, communion changes next Sunday. So if you want to continue receiving communion in the pew like we've been doing, pick up one of those as you enter church. If you want to come forward, leave them alone and just come and take a pew. And then when the time is appropriate, you'll come forward and receive the sacrament from Tim and from Velda. Uh, I think I don't have any other announcements to make. By the way, we will be taking up a collection after church, though, to help Tim with his poor, broken no, arm. Just... You what? <laughs> he will accept any kind gifts, yeah. <laughs> this is why I don't try to fix my own car. I take it to the dealer and I say, make it good. <laughs> Anyways, go with a smile. So go in peace. Love your neighbor. Thank you.